remember this number because I'm going to talk about it at the end of this video. Last week, we made this mold out of this kit. I don't like cutting molds with paper on my bench because it just slip and slides all over the place. So for the moment, let's just pull it off. That's why I love wax. Absolutely no leakage. None, 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 none. Perfect. Perfect. I always like to clean the flash off of molds with scissors. I think that's the easiest, best way to do it. This serves no function, just makes the mold a little prettier to look at. A little more craftly. All right, and here's the bottom where the parts attached to the mold box, and that's gonna tell us where to start our cut. Ready to cut this mold, and I'm gonna take my time I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna follow the parts down as I open the mold very carefully because the success of this mold depends on how carefully I place the parting lines around each of the parts. I have to say I'm pretty pleased with this mold. Just going through with the bristle brush and seeing if there's any bits of wax. I don't know if you can see them, but there's some little wax chips in there. See those little wax chips in there? I always consider the first casting out of a mold to be the clean-out casting, and uh, it pulls out any of, the, of this kind of debris and little stuff that's left behind in the, first, in the mold. There's one more thing I want you to notice about this mold that's important, and that is it is a one-piece cut mold. You notice I left a hinge. That hinge is absolutely crucial because what happens is when you close the mold, it just guarantees that that mold is going to fall together. If we can get parting lines that look like that, we're going to have minimal cleanup on these parts. You just want your parting lines to just disappear. We're casting resin today, so I got out the B-side. It's super important that you follow directions, and this manufacturer wants me to pre-mix my B-side well, so that's what we're going to do. <sighs> Okay, I made the point. The trick to making these parts is to pre-fill the cavities, and then you pop them in the pressure pot. Doing that means that you're not gonna have any bubbles in any of the important surfaces. All of these parts, the fronts and backsides of the parts are gonna be clean and free from bubbles. So you just go through and fill up each and every one in all the deep places. You have to be careful not to put any resin on the parting surfaces because if you do that, resin will harden, and then it'll hold the mold open, and you'll get more flash, and that's not what we want. Check of the witness cup. Yep, hard as a rock. Let's go pull those things out of the pot. Let's mix the res. Okay, here we go. Now this time, we can be a little sloppier with our pour. We don't want to be super sloppy because we still don't want a lot of flash. But the reality is you're going to have flash around these parts. You just are. We are definitely going to get some squeeze out. We are definitely going to get some flash. Let's do it. There you go. Okay, yep. Definitely have some squeeze out, some mess. Let's deal with the mess while we are doing it. Okay, looks good, looks good. Okay, now we just wanna push down, get everything into alignment. We're just pushing out the excess resin, making sure that the parting lines are nice and tight and beauteous. All right, looks pretty good. Keeping everything nice and clean. No resin on my hands. This is just one of the mold case pieces. Fits right on there. And let's put a weight on top of this. I'm not sure that that's going to be enough weight, but we're going to know soon enough. Okay, well, let's run this into the pressure pot. 
All right, fun times. Let's see what we got. We got a fair amount of drippage. That was expected. Let's see how we did. Oh, look at that. Holy moly. Let's peel it. Let's see what we got. Superficially, I'm pretty pleased. Let's take a look at that. Can you see that? Get a good look at that. Let's peel this thing off. Peel these parts out of here. Nice, they peeled out pretty clean, left the mold pretty clean. Look at that. All right, what do we got? What do we got for bubbles? Man, oh man, superficially, I don't see any bubbles. Now, obviously, there's a ton of flash in a squish mold. That's just part of the casting process. It's kind of a pain because we're going to have to clean up all that flash, but it is paper thin and it is going to be reasonably simple to clean it. Boy, I couldn't be more pleased with this. Uh, that casts just fine. Cleaning these parts is really just a matter of scraping. I like to use a knife, an X-Acto blade. I do the vast majority of my cleanup with an X-Acto knife. Uh, sometimes they use sanding sticks and other things, but you can see how tight and clean these parting lines are. I'm gonna blame any parting line I see on the original casting. <laughs> and not on my mold. But anyway, they're super clean. Look at that, look how clean that is. I found one teeny bubble on this part right there. And that's in a little bit of a tricky spot to clean because it's on an edge. But no worries, we could get that filled in. Still, did catch one bubble there. Can't claim perfection, I mean, almost never, <laughs> almost never can claim perfection because I usually find uh, somewhere in there, there's going to be a bubble or two, but basically these parts are super clean. All right, our little boy is done. <laughs> I got him all assembled. He came out pretty good. I have to say, I'm pleased with the way he came out. Now, these three flaws that you can see here, turns out those are not bubbles in the casting. Those are actually uh, little bits of little dingleberries, bits of debris uh, that got stuck in the casting. Little, little slivers of rubber, that sort of thing that were down in there, I dug them out. We're gonna go ahead and fill them in with Magic Sculpt, which is my favorite material to use for filling in divots like this. But overall, I have to say, the mold made a really nice casting. Remember at the beginning of the video, I told you to remember this number, $3.29. <laughs> I wanna talk about this because of comments that I know I'm gonna get, and they're going to be, you know, you could buy a lot of these before you pay for the molds and the resin and all the stuff, it makes no sense for you to cast these things because you could buy them so much cheaper. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> First of all, my response to that is, duh, yes, obviously, you could buy bunches of these. This mold alone, just the rubber is probably eight or nine dollars worth of rubber and the resin's a few dollars more. You know, what's your time worth at, at minimum wage, 15 bucks an hour? You know, you've got a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks tied up in making this one little thing. On the other hand, I could make a bunch more, but still, economically, it makes absolutely no sense to recast these and copy them when you could buy them for $3.29. Now, that's probably a markdown price, but still, it makes no sense to do this. Except for, number one, this is a mold-making <laughs> casting channel. It's what we do around here. And number two, the reason you do this is because it's fun and for the satisfaction of doing it. So yes, you don't need, I love your comments and you can answer me back and you can point out anything you want. It's all fine with me. Comments, bring them on, bring them on. <laughs> this is strictly for fun. That's why we're doing this. It's not about making sense. And this is another thing I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a lot of people say, you're ripping off Reaper and you're stealing and you're teaching people to recast Reaper Miniatures does not care if their fans make copies because there's no economic sense in it and there's no economic harm to Reaper. If anything, it's fan involvement. It's fan art, it's fan involvement, and companies have learned that the best thing is a devoted group of fans who love their products. So Reaper's not gonna complain about that. 
What Reaper would be very unhappy about is finding out that there's a huge Chinese factory turning these out for 29 cents a piece and selling them all over the world. Yeah, that they would care about. But I promise you, you guys, you are not stealing or taking money out of Reaper's pocket by recasting their things, unless you decide to set up a little workshop. And if you do, I can tell you, you're gonna lose, <laughs> you're gonna lose your shirt, your hat, your pants, your underwear. It makes no economic sense. So don't worry about these issues. This is for fun. Okay, uh, rant over, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. I hope you had, by the way, before I go, forgot to mention this, the result of the poll that I took last week was clear. There was a clear, overwhelming majority of people preferred weekly videos. But enough people said, yeah, I'd really like to see them as complete projects. Uh, then I really am trying to figure out a good way to do that. I haven't figured it out yet, but thank you so much for all of you that answered the polls. I thought I'd get like 30 comments and I got a huge number of responses. Very grateful to all of you. All right, enough. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.